Oh, the microphone was muted. Oh, looks like my signature move now. Uh, yeah, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. What was the Truman Show thing? Uh, so we're going to have just, uh, we said it's just chatting tonight, no coding. So if you wanted coding, watch one of the uh, old videos. Uh, Yeah, I just, uh, you know, it's the end of the year. It's always a good time to reflect on how your life's going. Uh, I'm 34. Uh, I've been uh, active on Twitter in the last two days. You know, you won't get you won't get Twitter activity all the time. Uh, I rewatched parts of my third Lex today. I watched content all day today. I went for a nice long walk. Um, your life is sad ASF. I'm sorry, bro. Um, now I'll, I'll leave you with something. I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you something. Um, I remember like six years ago, I was at my friend's house in, in uh, Colorado. I said to myself, look, everything that's wrong in your life is your fault, right? And it doesn't even matter if that's true or not. My point is believing that is the first step to fixing it. Everything that's wrong in your life is your fault. Right? The reason we live in the new Roman Empire, the reason we're enjoying this decline right now, it's my fault, right? It's my fault. Um... Yeah, I was referring to an introduction to clone graph complexity and its applications. Good book. Uh, so I think I think we'll start. We're gonna do some some reading review, some things I've read in the last. Uh, so uh, Curtis has a has a Substack, uh, and I, I like this. A techno pessimist manifesto. Um, you should text her. Oh, I left their fridge open. Hang on. We're having nighttime coffee, we're reading. I was uh I was gonna fly home today, but I didn't. I stayed around and read. Um I listened to a whole lot of Peter Thiel lectures too. Peter Thiel's been uh saying some good stuff lately. Uh, mole bugs a bit stale. Not really. I mean, what do you think's better? Well, they they got Trump. I mean, there, there's no right. Let's 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 avoid short term thinking and start thinking more long term. Right? Okay? Well, maybe beyond the 2024 election. Uh, though, you know who's been killing it lately? Tucker Carlson. I mean, look, he still has his problems, but uh, you can see the like stories Fox News forced on him and the stories he can now post on X, right? Like a, uh, you know, a, a full defense of, uh, of Julian Assange, uh, you know, the, the journalist uh, industrial complex will allow no competition to the journalist industrial complex. Julian Assange was... Uh, if there was any integrity and in any prizes in journalism, he's the greatest journalist of the 21st century, right? Um, yeah, I mean, Tucker can... <laughs> there is a sense, un, like, unfortunately, there's a sensationalism that I don't always like about it. Um, but, you know, I guess that's what it takes to sell news. I don't know. I don't, I don't appreciate the sensationalism, but... Uh, in general, I think his takes are, are quite good. Uh, what's the current perspective of Americans? Well, <laughs> I can speak to me and my friends, and uh, I mean, you know, I'm like, it's uh, regard what, what they're doing to him is insane. Um, but I don't know if that's general American. I'm not sure what the general American thinks. You'd have to look at polls. 
Uh, so this one's a little political, but we're not going to get super political here. Uh, we always try to avoid talking about any controversy of the day, right? Um, well, maybe we'll start with the Peter Thiel thing. Uh, Peter Thiel lecture. He had very uh, interesting. Let's see if we can get the transcript of this. Uh, I think it was this one. I don't know. I was I was listening to them. I, I love my folding phone, guys. It's in the other room, but I got a, I got a Samsung uh, Galaxy Z Fold 5. Absolutely love it. Uh, if you're gonna buy a folding phone, buy that one. Don't buy the OnePlus Open. It's literally twice as fast. And you know, they have QDL restore files. I'm still fighting with OnePlus. Uh, he's so sad what that company's become. But yeah, no, uh, Galaxy Z Fold 5, absolutely love the phone. And I wish I trusted uh, Android to be my primary phone operating system. Maybe I'll come around to it. Um, well, I mean, is Tucker Cross Tucker Carlson sort of a journalist? I mean, yeah, these are the people who are who are actual journalists, right? Not just uh, the extended press secretaries, right? Um, so let's see if we can get this transcript. Maybe someone can find it. I actually saw the transcript somewhere, I thought. Cause I read the transcript and then I actually listened to it today. Uh, I have a show transcript button, but I don't want the crappy, uh, the crappy YouTube transcript. Okay, I'll settle for the crappy YouTube transcript. Can we, can we at least zoom in on this? No, we can't. No, 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 no. You know what? Actually, I think if we just search for one of these phrases. No. Uh, the myth of the... Oh, come on. All right, I didn't prepare enough for this video. Well, we'll go when ahead. I was when I was undergraduate. Um, well, they had a transcript of it. I'm pretty sure. Where, where did I read it? If the smartest. People. I will give a channel point to uh, anyone who finds this. I don't know if I can give away channel points, but, oh, I think it was in Pirate Wires. Um, check out Pirate Wires if you haven't too. Uh, Pirate Wires is it's like Mike Solana and people. Uh, where is this? They have it. They have it somewhere. Because I read this transcript. Oh, come on. Okay, okay, you found it? Uh, Post is for paid subscribers. Actually, am a paid subscriber. I'm just not logged into anything. Oh, so that must be what it is. Okay. Uh, I'm a paid subscriber, but I'm not a paid subscriber on anything I'm going to log in on, unfortunately. So we'll have to figure out. Okay. YouTube good transcript view. Because we're going to talk about this for a... Uh, we're going to talk about this for a bit. Okay, there's a way to open this in the new, in like a new window. Okay, we got a paste bin here. Okay, someone managed to copy this and that's completely unreadable. Okay. Um, new criterion. Oh, he, 
Oh, he put this in New Criterion. Oh, I love New Criterion. Okay, okay. Maybe this is where I saw it, too. Um, does he end with his... his uh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, good. So, oh, yeah, 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 this is it. Cool. Uh, this is where I read it, actually. New Criterion. I have a few. Palladium, Long Form, New Criterion, and National Codex 10. Uh, you know, it's, it's important to stay up to date on stuff. I've been working really hard on Tiny Grad lately. Uh, so we see. Um, so I, have you ever read the diversity myth? Uh, it, it's Peter Thiel's OG book. Um, and it's kind of interesting. I mean, the year here is, uh, is very notable. It's 1995. Um, you know, again, and we've talked about, whenever we talk about wokeness on this channel, uh, we talk about, uh, again, not, don't, uh, don't take this to hate trans people or minorities or anything like that. Take this to hate uh, universities and really how the university system has, has failed us in, in a very fundamental way, right? And this is not a political point. The only political point that I'm making on this stream is that acceleration is good, right? Um, I think maybe you've seen my arguments about this before. Uh, acceleration is the only thing that lifted humanity out of poverty on the whole. You have to basically make the pie of the economy bigger. Um, I saw some people respond to one of my Twitter things yesterday about like, uh, what did I post yesterday? Um, they, they respond with like, it's important how the wealth is distributed. It, it's really not important how the wealth is distributed. And the more you focus on how the wealth is distributed, the less you focus on making sure there's more wealth in the world, right? Uh, the the, the uh, Gini coefficient of a country is much less important than the, uh, you know, the GDP of the country, right? right? We, we don't have any, any ultra advanced countries which have, you know, very high GDPs, but uh, life is terrible for everybody who lives there. That's just not really how it works. Uh, okay. So... Um, Till talks about a few, talks about wokeness in a, in a very uh, intelligent way. Not in the sense of wokeness is bad, but in the sense of why is wokeness uh, spreading? Right? Why, why did this ideology manage to spread? Why is, is, is uh, Claudine Gay now the president of Harvard? Right? How, how, did the, how did we go from Larry Summers to Claudine Gay? What, what actually happened? Um, so I, I loved this anecdote. Uh, a few years after the diversity myth came out, a Stanford physics professor, Bob uh, Laughlin, got a Nobel Prize. And he began to suffer from the supreme delusion that now that he had a Nobel Prize in physics, he also had academic freedom. Now, there's a lot of controversial topics in science. Uh, you know, you could have a lot of different heterodox views, but he managed to find something that was far more taboo than any of the normal ones. He hit on the idea that most of the scientists were doing no work at all. Um, Till goes on to talk about, it's very easy to criticize the humanities uh, department of universities, right? It's very easy to criticize gender studies, or even to go less, uh, less politicized, you could talk about criticizing interpretive dance, right? You know, or... or, or, or uh, you know, uh, Mesopotamian history, right? These, these completely, uh, as the Unabomber would describe them, surrogate activities. Uh, but that's hitting them at the weak point, right? Till even goes as far as to say, this is what the center left bureaucrat wants. Uh, what if instead you say that the universities have made no progress in physics? And it sure seems true, right? We made all this progress in, in fundamental physics in up until, really, the 1970s. Um, something happened in the 1970s where progress kind of stopped, right? Uh, so if you look at USA energy usage, um, you know, you can... This is the one that I usually get, yeah, energy usage per capita. But we see if we get one going further back, because you really don't see the, the absolute startling 
Yeah. Um, so you see from 1950 to 1970, uh, it doubled and then it went flat, right? Uh, this is this is energy usage per capita. Um, this was brought up on the last stream. Uh, productivity and compensation. Uh, do they have energy here? They don't have energy here, but the same thing's true in energy too. Um, something happened here and the energy usage has been completely flat since. Uh, so something happened pretty much in the last 50 years that has prevented uh, growth in energy usage, that has prevented progress in the sciences. What, what fundamental science has been figured out in the last 50 years? The answer is almost none. Um, a lot of the bio stuff and health outcomes, right? Uh, right? Even here, it tapers off later, but it still starts to taper off. Um, look, you can see the tapering off here in, in Mexico. You can see the tapering off in the UK. Uh, so Laughlin's team started with an inquiry into the bio department, uh, launching an inquiry into what exactly it was doing. Um, <laughs> the generous conclusion would be that the department wasn't fully fraudulent, just an incredibly incrementalist exercise and groupthink that wasn't really moving the dial forward. Uh, this line of thinking was uh, completely, completely taboo. I, I don't need to tell you how the story ends. On uh, the lecture, he actually goes into it and, uh, well, his students couldn't get PhDs anymore. He lost tenure, so on and so forth. Um, I like this as well. He talks about how, which do you think is worse run, the DMV or the NSA, right? We all know how badly the DMV is run but why do we think that the NSA has a secret bastion of competence? And I love this because I, I use this for startups as well, right? Secrecy uh, with very, like, with the only notable exception of Apple is inversely proportional to coolness. If a startup is secretive about something, it is almost always because it is not good instead of because it is good. Uh, we joke about the secret good version of OpenPilot, but of course there is no secret good version of OpenPilot. If we had that, we would have released it to you. Um, so, uh, he, he talks about something else that I, I hadn't really uh, heard before, but it's this microeconomic problem um, where... He talks about how uh, goods like housing, right? If you uh, decrease the supply of housing 1%, the average price goes up 2%, right? If, if, if artificially restricting the supply increases the total market cap of the good, uh, this is a hard problem to solve. This is true for oil too. Uh, this is why you have things like OPEC, right? Again, if you were to increase uh, oil production or housing production, the pricing of existing oil or housing would fall. Now that's obviously true, but what's not obviously true for these goods is that not just the price of the existing stuff would fall, the entire market cap of the sector would fall. Um, and uh, let's see if he, he talks about it here, but, but I loved that as like, a, Wait, that's a real problem, right? That's a real problem with, with, with what you consider a free market. If, if you like free market economics, how do you solve the problem of uh, basically artificially decreasing supply of something increases the total market cap of the thing, right? Actually makes the pie bigger. The pie is bigger by, re by re artificially reducing supply. Uh, and this uh, has been brought up for, for cigarettes, uh, for oil and for housing. Uh, so that's a big problem. 
uh, that it's not clear how you uh, how you solve with free market economics. But this is the cutting edge, right? So look, it's a just chatting stream. We're talking about politics, but um, I watched another video of, of, of Teals where he talks about this guy who's like, uh, more fossil fuels, more fossil fuels, good. Um, and uh, yeah, I didn't think the pro fossil fuels guy was making such great arguments, but I did like that the whole thing was post alarmist. And this is where we need to get to. We need to start talking very sensibly about how to uh, fix these problems. All right, we, we need to move past a world of every every culture war issue, regardless of what your feelings are on on gay marriage, on abortion, on on whatever culture bullshit. Like 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 it's all a distraction from basic economics. It's all a distraction from the fact that we are no longer experiencing growth. And how do we get that growth back? Um, yeah, energy usage is the let, let's let's find. Uh, I want the one going way back. You can search for the Henry Adams curve. The Henry Adams curve is what we were promised. Uh, yeah, so here it is going way back. Um, all right, so you, you see you see an exponential growth, uh, and then in the 1970s, uh, it's cut off, right? So, it, you know, Teal goes into like um, he talks a bit about Christianity too, which which I find very interesting. Uh, you know, is it is it possible to be to be too Christian? Uh, he he talks about wokeism as a uh, offshoot of Christianity, where without forgiveness, where you keep original sin but you remove forgiveness, right? Um, and then he talks about these these neo he he describes Bronze Age pervert as neo pagan, um, where you don't even have the concept of original uh, sin. Basically, the victims deserve it. Uh, so it's interesting. It's interesting to to see this to see this spectrum, right? Like like Christianity has original sin and forgiveness. Over here, you have original sin and no forgiveness. And over here, you have no original sin. Uh, so yeah. Um. Uh. He talks about the etymology of political correctness. Um, basically, uh, political correctness comes from uh, comes from Moscow. Being politically correct meant that you were uh, a good comrade. Um, my uh, my goal here is to be is to concretize all these concerns, not with the aim of providing answers, but simply of asking questions. And I think that they are very uh, good questions. He also described, and I, I listened to like four hours of PGTL content this morning. He also describes uh, the 2010s as this like groundhog day, um, as this groundhog. And, and I really did not like the 2010s. I, I think that now we are on the verge of something new. Um, I think that the 2010s were completely fake, uh, largely because of, of, of uh, zero percent interest rates. Um, so this one. So. He, he again described it in a way that I thought was absolutely uh, uh, simple and and beautiful. Uh, Fed interest rates. Why is this? Why are all these charts so complicated? I want the Fed rate over time. Here it is. Okay. Thanks, CNBC. Um, yeah, so, you know, I, I don't think that this, uh, that this decade was a very a good time. I think that we had a lot of uh, counter progress in technology, uh, but he, he describes very clearly why this had to happen. And it's because deficits got large. So if you have a really large debt, you want the interest rate to be really low because your payments on servicing that debt are really low, right? Think about it. If you buy something on credit, uh, you know, you want your credit card to have 0% APR, right? Um, if you have debt, you want low interest rates. Uh, if you do not have debt, 
you want uh, high interest rates, right? So, you know, I, I'm rooting for this number to go up. Um, I, I think that the, that the interest rate should be much higher uh, than it is. Um, by the way, again, if the interest rates go up, the price of housing will fall. Uh, the price of all goods will fall. So, I mean, I just thought that is like, like the, the people, uh, you know, in charge had no choice because deficits were so large, all you could do was lower interest rates to make it so you can push the problem into the future. And uh, we pushed a lot of problems into the future until now they are, uh, now they are unsustainable. Um, you know, again, I'll take a slight uh, sideline into, into current politics. Um, again, the just chatting stream. I'm sorry if this offends you. Uh, but but it's interesting that the uh, the Jews have been. Uh, it, it's interesting to watch the even mainstream media uh, now no longer print this uncritical diversity gibberish. Uh, it's interesting, right? It's, it's it's actually it's actually really cool. So uh, you know, uh, sorry you you pissed the Jews off, and uh, <laughs> well you know ask Kanye where his sneaker deal is, right? Um, but uh, you know, again, this is not a you, know, you have you have takes on absolutely every single side of this, right? Uh, the the four chan take on Israel Palestine is uh, I want them all to die. You know, it's, it's, it's just like you have you have takes on absolutely every side of this. And I don't mean that any of the takes are, are, are better or worse. I'm mostly indifferent to most of this stuff. I'm talking about what concretely affects my life. Um, and one of the things that concretely does affect my life is the the pushing of... of, of um, okay, so I'll talk about how it affects my life, right? So uh, politics is really dumb. Following along with politics that does not affect your life is really dumb. The kind of person who reads the news, right? Uh, I met this woman who was who was uh, living in in uh, she was living in Japan. We met up in Tokyo, and she was reading the American news, and it was outraging her. And I'm like, "You are in Tokyo. None of this shit matters, right?" Like she was upset about like border or Trump or whatever. Like like bro, you're in Japan. This doesn't matter, right? Um. So let's get to the actual issue that does uh, affect me. Which is uh, which is progress. Um, uh, progress does affect me. Uh, the other thing, what did was this a new Criterion thing? Um, if you haven't seen New Criterion, I, I like I like these guys. Um, One of the posts uh, talked about basically how complex uh, our society is. Um, our our society is extremely complex, and it requires. Uh, let's see if we can find it. It requires highly skilled people in order to maintain the complexity in our society, right? Who's running our power plants, who's running our water grids, who are our air traffic controllers. Um, and if we move away from a uh, merit-based system, the nice things in society are going to start to fail. Uh, now, this seems, this seems obviously true. Again, I I'm not talking about only worry, do not ever uh, get caught up with a political issue that doesn't affect you, right? Whether Trump or Biden wins the next presidential election, it doesn't affect me, right? The, the, the crisis at the southern border, it doesn't affect me, right? This doesn't, this doesn't affect my day-to-day -day life. You say that, oh, maybe it will in the future, and eh, maybe it will in the future, right? Um, but yeah, things don't affect you, you should avoid. But things that do affect you, well, you got to think about them, right? Um, so let's see if we can find this. I don't think it was this one. I'm pretty sure it was New Criterion. And it's interesting that, uh, that Teal was here too. Uh, Henry Kissinger, I guess he just died. That's why people are interested. Um, Uh, 
They also talk about the uh, Maybe it was this one. Um, it was like Griggs versus Ohio Power. I didn't know about this, uh, but this was a yeah Griggs versus Duke uh, Duke Power Co. Again, 1971. It's it's interesting that all these things happened at pretty much the same time. Um, it was basically a uh, the power company wanted to give a uh, basically an IQ test uh, to to uh, prospective employees, and they ruled that in 1971 that using IQ tests uh, was illegal. Uh, in employment because you couldn't show that someone's IQ directly impacted their performance on the job. Um, again, you know, so there's your, there's your correlation between SAT and IQ. Uh, so, I mean, colleges basically do use a, uh, do use a uh, an IQ test uh, to determine who gets in, but there's movement away from that, right? There's there's movement away from using SATs on college applications, right? Uh, now, why anyone would want to go to a school that doesn't use any objective criteria? I mean, at that point, what are people being picked on, right? Uh, okay, I think we got a little bit into the weeds there, but we'll come back to how this relates to uh, accelerationism. So one of the greatest questions, and I've tried to find the exact quote. I think it was a zero HP Lovecraft quote. Ooh, there's two types of capital that he defines. He talks about human capital and techno capital. Um, human capital, is it increasing or decreasing? Uh, you can look at this in two ways, right? You can kind of look at the human capital per capita, right? Is the average human today uh, better than the average human 100 years ago, right? And it's not clear what the answer is to that. But if the answer is that the average human is worse, then this goes into basically the, if you've built a system, right? It is true that the people who build the system uh, generally are smarter than the people who, uh, who do end up maintaining it. But if the people who end up maintaining it aren't smart enough to do that, uh, then we start to get widespread collapse. Uh, I've been watching a whole bunch of, uh, I think it's practical engineering on YouTube. Uh, this is civil engineering, it's, it's really cool stuff. And talking about how if we see collapse, if we start to see collapse in something like the electrical grid, like what they're seeing in South Africa, um, Tons of other systems start to collapse also. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just really important that human capital, you know, is, is kept up to the point that it can maintain these systems until we do eventually hand them over to machines, uh, if we do that. But if uh, Harvard is no longer using the SAT for admissions, well, where are these people going to come from, right? We're, we're, do, do we have a pipeline anymore to get... Uh, talented people, right? Um, by the way, and I'll, 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 I'll say this and I'll, I'll emphasize this, uh, you know, I think racism is extremely stupid. Um, I think that uh, using someone's race, uh, no matter how you use it, uh, to determine uh, anything, pretty much, is just dumb. Um, because you're not going to get the best person for the job, right? You're going to have this confounding variable, which again, you know, I think all humans are pretty much the same. Uh, not all human, not all individuals are the same, right? But like, you know, maybe there's some differences between racial groups, but who cares, right? Let's just focus on the individual. Uh, all right, so classic liberalism, classic liberalism going to fail, blah, 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 blah. Okay, um, so uh, can we accelerate our way out of this? We are here, uh, human capital declining. Uh, we have two choices. Uh, we have a fixed human capital or we beat it with a lot of techno capital. Um, 
There's more variation within races than between, of course. You can, like, read all these things. You know, it's, it's, again, like, like it's a lot of, like, conspiracy theories. When you make something taboo, uh, the things... Or when you ban something, right? When you try to censor something. When you try to... People generally assume that the truth is much worse than it actually is. When if you just, you know, told people the truth, you'd be like, oh, okay. Um, and, you know, we don't need to talk about the truth. It's an, it's an upsetting truth, but, you know, it is a truth. And you can look at it. And then you realize, well, hang on. Uh, we can we can still build a very functional society. Um, why is it so hard to tell the truth? Well, so the teal thing kind of uh, goes into this. Um, here we go. Why it's so hard to tell the truth? Well, assume that people are purely motivated by economics. Uh, and he, he poses an interesting, again, assume that it's all, and he talks about real estate kind of being the core, the core thing, right? Assume that everything is basically motivated to make real estate prices go up, right? Like, like stop thinking of, 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 of wokeness as causative and start thinking of what caused wokeness. Uh, and he, he has a funny, uh, A thought experiment might flush out this crazy theory just a little bit. If you were sitting here in Manhattan back in 2007 or in San Francisco and you told me the average rent would double in the next 16 years, I would say that's completely impossible. People would just move. They'd figure out some other place to go. But maybe you countered, well, let's say rent's going to double anyway. And then you asked, how would that be possible? It would be inexplicable without recourse to some kind of ideological superstructure inflicting some version of Stockholm Syndrome. If you're a gay person, you might be told that if you ever move from Manhattan to Hoboken, you'll be beat up by bat-wielding thugs right away. If you're a woman living in a rat-infested apartment in San Francisco where the rent is going up and up while you fantasize about a nice suburban house in Reno, Nevada, you might hear that, well, if you ever dare move to Reno, you're gonna be chained to a bed and forced to carry a baby to term, right? Um, <laughs> the only logical explanation is that a crazed ideological intensification has distracted us from what's really going on. Um, I'll, I'll say this too, right? So I, I do very often ask the question, how much are, am I affected by my own biases, right? Do I like that explanation because I hate San Francisco, right? Or is it because it's a good and true explanation? I don't know. It's really hard to tell. Um, I don't know. That, that's why I really like falling back on the things that are data. Uh, things like, you know, now we have a declining life expectancy in the United States. Uh, you know, and then, then this one. This is, this, is the truly, this is the truly unforgivable sin of the last 50 years. That energy usage per capita in the United States has stagnated. Now, you want to see energy usage per capita in China? Right? Boom. Whatever happened. Um, I, was, I was in China around that time, you know, very, what an amazing time. What an amazing time to be there. Uh, oh, 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 it gets sadder. Oh yeah, it gets sadder if you go to, yup. Yup, it gets, it, I mean, yeah. The European countries are even sadder. Um, we're bearish on civilization today. Uh, okay, so let's, this is a good, that's a good segue into the next, uh, the next, the next reading. Uh, but yeah, listen to, the, listen to that Teal lecture, it's really good.
So, uh, we did our attack on, uh, on, on, on wokeism, on mainstreamism, on, come on, does anybody seriously think Harvard? Does anybody seriously think Harvard's good, right? Nobody thinks that anymore, right? Like, like they talking about the collapse of the universities, it's, it's passe. It doesn't even have to end with tanks on the Harvard campus. It just ends with, uh, you know, just the, 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 the loss of status, um, in in uh in harvard and in the ivy league right you can look at the declining uh enrollment numbers you can look at the declining um uh number of people in general going to college i mean i guess it's just employment numbers anyway um isn't the energy graph just uh tracking the move of basic production to china i don't know what that has to do with production um, you could say that, yeah, okay, maybe, I don't know how they measure that. I don't know how, if they include the energy that was used to produce a good that's then imported to America. Um, well, you say their research facility is nearly the best in every field, but please tell me more about where we've made progress in the last 50 years. All right. There's been limited progress in, in, in biology, but still nothing compared to what there like could be, right? You know, here's, here's, here's something that just blows my mind when I think about it, right? Everyone knows that we went to the moon in 1969. Uh, everyone knows that, right? They're like, oh, maybe this was just some completely unsustainable, um, you know, the 747 came out in 1969, this plane today is over 50 years old. And you'd be so lucky to get on a 747. Most of the time you're on some shit tier 737, right? We don't even have make planes this good anymore. This is, this is a 53, 54 year old plane. How sad, right? Let's go 54 years before, uh, you know, 1969, right? Um, let's look at a what year was the Wright brothers? Right? In a productive 54 years, we went from this to that, right? And then. In another in another fifty four years, okay. I mean, we do have okay. We do have we do have seven eighty seven today, right? I like seven eighty sevens. They're 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 okay, but you know they wouldn't be something that is unrecognizable to someone in nineteen sixty nine, right? It's not that different. Okay, the engine got a little bit bigger. You can see they clearly did some cost reduction where they got rid of some of the engines. Uh, they made the plane a little smaller. Uh, they made the wings look fancier. Great, but like, like just, just, just when you go from that to that, uh, what? Um, A three eighties are pretty nice. Okay, okay, okay. We, I mean, we can look at the A three eighty. The A three eighty is what? Is thirty years old now? How old are A three eighties? A three eighties might actually be newer than that. How new are A three eighties? Oh no, 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 they're newer than that. Okay, A three eighties are sixteen years old. I mean, again, it looks pretty similar. A three eighties are very nice planes. Um, but yeah, the new stuff is boring and uninspiring, right? Um, and it probably is related to this general sort of, this general sort of decline. Uh, he went into another thing. I, uh, I listened to Teal and uh, David Graber, the Bullshit Jobs Guy talk. And, you know, just how, I mean, I think about me, right? Where do I end up? Where do I end up? And see, I'm, um, I have slightly better executive functioning than a lot of people who sort of look like me, right? I, I am capable of starting companies and raising money, uh, but you know, I'm also, I'm pretty weird. Uh, and I just, I read about, I read about these like mathematicians, right? And this is the lifestyle that I wanted. The, the, the life that I wanted was to go around from place to place and like work on problems I never wanted to participate in business. We have to today, right? Because that other system is completely destroyed. Um, at least fundamentally, business is tied to what people will buy 
and there is some inherent uh, democracy there, right? People kind of know what's good. Uh, okay, so we've done our criticism of, uh, of Wokey and classic accelerationist uh, theory. Um, I'm also, uh, Argentina has a, has a new guy. We'll, we'll, we'll see how things work for him. Uh, I like the El Salvador guy. Uh, the El Salvador guy tweeted, it, it, uh, you can, it's interesting. It's interesting what's happening in South America. Maybe now that the, uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, I always think of them as a bastion of the stupidest kind of like communism, socialism, Venezuela, Argentina, right? The Argentinian currency, right? Um, I remember like, oh, it went down again. <laughs> <laughs> Your average shitcoin outperformed the Argentinian peso. Oh, by the way, uh, we thought about buying Bird. Remember Bird scooters? Um, uh, the market cap of Bird scooters is now $1.3 million. So, you know, I, I thought about dropping 700K and buying a controlling share in Bird. Um, uh, eh, I mean, it didn't do as bad as uh, Argentina's currency. <laughs> Is Brazil that bad too? Uh, not as bad as Argentina. No, that's like a normal, like, okay, I like it went down a bit, but like, come on. Come on, that's this is this is hyperinflation land, right? Uh, China canceled currency swap with Argentina because the new president said he hates communists. <laughs> oh man. Uh, well, you know, you can you can uh, you gotta separate. Come on, you gotta you gotta separate Argentinian communism from Chinese communism, right? Chinese communism builds high-speed trains. I remember riding on some buses in Argentina over things that could barely be called roads. Uh, you don't get the art, yeah. So, so you you can also talk about potentially um, that the decline in STEM has happened because uh, all the easy problems have been solved. Yeah, I've heard this argument too. Maybe, maybe, but like, does that explain the energy usage thing? No. Um, Teal also had an interesting take on the nuclear, uh, why, why nuclear stopped and it wasn't Chernobyl or Three Mile Island, it was actually India getting the bomb after we gave them civilian nuclear reactors that they made into bombs, right? Uh, that's an interesting take. Okay, so we did our, we did our, we did our uh, hating on, on wokeism and now let's hate on accelerationism, right? We gotta hate on everybody equally, right? Isn't that what the news is? The news is when you get two people from both sides and just let them talk, right? Because that's what news is. Um, a techno-pessimist manifesto. Are you a techno-optimist? This is a serious condition, as common as pre-diabetes. Don't laugh. You can treat your pre-diabetes and your techno-optimism too. Uh, corn syrup. Techno-optimism. As Americans, and we're all Americans now, location, even birth location is just a detail, we're all techno-optimists. The American idea is the idea of techne, man-made order, creating a city on the hill in a new wild continent. Uh, you know, it's funny, like, you can read Andreessen's, uh, Mark Andreessen's tech, like, tech optimism manifesto. And I read it and it doesn't resonate with me. Uh, that's what he's responding to. Uh, I think maybe that even links here. Yeah. You can read this, right? And, like, this seems very much like a rehash of, uh, right? Uh, you know, I, I like, again, I'll say the same thing I said on, like, Latent Space. Uh, I like Mark Andreessen, uh, but I do think that some of his ideas are. Uh, the first word that comes to mind is juvenile, and I, I don't really mean that as a as like a like a like a, like it's a idealistic. Let's say that's a that's a more positive way to put it. 
Um, so you know, it reminds me uh, very similarly of the uh, of the of the Futurist Manifesto, right? We have stayed up all night, my friends and I, under hanging mosque lamps with dome of filigreed brass. Dome starred like our spirits, shining them with the prisoned radiance of electric hearts. For hours we had trampled our atavistic ennui into rich oriental rugs, arguing up to the last confines of logic and blackening many realms of paper with our frenzied scribbling, right? Just imagine like a bunch of guys sitting in like an Italian cafe drinking espressos being like, yeah, man, yeah, you know, you heard of cosmism, man? You should see what the Russians are doing. They're gonna bring everybody back from the dead, man. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, um, we intend to sing the love of danger, the habit of energy and fearlessness, courage, audacity, and revolt will be essential elements of our poetry. Up until now, literature has exalted a pensive immobility, ecstasy, and sleep. We tend to exalt aggressive action, a feverish insomnia, the racer's stride, the mortal leap, the punch, and the slap. Right? Uh, so this is, this is, I think it's 1912. Uh, 1909, 1909, the, the founding and manifesto of uh, futurism, right? Uh, let's, let's just contrast this with uh, Italy energy usage per capita. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, all right. So yeah, um, what happened? Uh, so I, I see a lot of a lot of uh, similarities here. I think this might even call out the uh, Futurist Manifesto specifically. No, it doesn't. Um, but yeah, I think that this philosophy, in a lot of ways, hasn't been updated for the the current uh, time. Uh, and look, you can actually say I've heard this as a like like I don't consider myself on the right, uh, but I certainly don't consider myself on the left. Um, and, you know, leftists don't attack each other. And I don't mean this as an attack. I, I don't, for the most part, if these sort of people were uh, in charge of everything, I would be much happier than the current group of people who are in charge of everything. But I do think there are some fundamental issues with it. And I think Curtis addresses some of them pretty well. Uh, so how did this uh, technological optimism work out uh, for Americans? Uh, how did that work out? Uh, well, it worked quite well at first, but as of late, you know, opinions vary. Um, do you have an opinion? Do you doubt your opinion? Either you're a pessimist and you want to see the instant confirm, or you're an optimist but want to be a scientific optimist, one whose belief is confirmed by doubt. If you want to doubt techno-optimism, here is a cure. I call my therapy the Johannesburg Protocol. It costs about $5,000. The protocol is fly to Johannesburg. Spend a week walking around the city. Stay safe. Make sure your hotel has a generator. See Johannesburg, capital of the Rainbow Nation. See the future. And when you get back, assuming you get back, take a day to think about how AI will fix South Africa, or VR will fix South Africa, or crypto, or whatever. Um, so I found this, uh, interesting, uh, South Africa ranks as one of the highest for, uh, screen time. Philippines, Brazil, Colombia, South Africa, Argentina. Um, interesting. What this means. Oh, they're, they're measuring vision loss. Uh, I've seen South Africa at the top of these lists too. Um, in terms of computer usage, South Africa is the is the uh, is the top. Um, yeah, South Africa, Brazil, Philippines, uh, highest average screen time, uh, which is interesting. Uh, so yes, uh, take a day to think about how AI will fix South Africa or VR will fix South Africa or crypto or whatever. I just like I just love these zingers from Curtis, right? Because like you sit here and think about it, and you imagine your like average like tech bro douchebag being like. Well, well, AI is gonna, is gonna, uh, 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 right? Like, ugh, no, like, bro, <laughs> bro, that's not the problem, right? Um, what you will see in Johannesburg is abundant physical evidence of a world that was functional 50 years ago, even 100 years ago, but now is halfway to Mad Max. I've never been to South Africa. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming Curtis has. 
uh, even if he hasn't, this backs up what I've seen in, in a number of YouTube videos on the topic. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you can read uh, Hopium. Hopium is a, a good way to, uh, to describe it. Um, I love this quote. Actually, America is not full. Uh, we can fit another 46 trillion humans in there if we grind them into a fine powder and store them in giant grain silos that will occupy every inch of this country. <laughs> so I love the imagery, right? Like you just, you just, you never get this. Like, like this is there, there is like a certain sort of absolute and complete fakeness I get from so many of these uh, like accelerationist people. Like, like this isn't a, a you know, the, the, the Wokies are going to beat you, right? Like, the Wokies deserve to beat you, right? Like, they're, 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 um, oh, you know what, you know what I was watching? Uh, yo, yo, I think, I think I brought this guy up on stream before, Lil Mabu, Lil Mabu, man. Um, okay. This, this video is fire, okay, kids. I promise I won't let you down. White boy lace, he about to make us catch another case. You don't want to be in no jail, uh, follow my. My fault, Fabi, I'm new to this place. Yeah, huh, yeah. Baby, welcome to the hood. Baby, welcome to the hood. If you're with us, you good, right? Um. So we'll, we'll go on in the Curtis thing, and he talks about this thing called thymos, right? And I want everybody to just think about this this video, which, I'm not ironically, I think is actually legitimately great. Um. And you know, it just it just got me thinking when when I was uh, when I was listening to this today about the uh, the barbarians who are coming for American culture, right, uh, or who are coming for civilization in general, right? Where where are the where are the Germanic hordes, right? Where are the uh, the Visigoths, you know? Where, where who's who's coming? And like, uh, <laughs> welcome to the hood. If you with us, you good, right? But this is actually not to hate, right? What's 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 so funny is like, you know, I, look, I. I I didn't grow up in the hood, man. I don't know that much about the hood. Mostly what I know from like videos like this and Adam 22, right? Um, but there certainly is one interesting thing that you know about, you know, whenever you go through an area like this is people are outside, right? And they're not necessarily outside because they got nowhere else to go. They're outside because like, yo, we're outside, man. We are a society, right? Whereas when you go to some of these you know, places that have, have experienced decline. There ain't nobody outside on the street, right? Uh, so, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, Andreessen, no unsubtle thinker, is not a pure uh, Pollyanna optimist. He, see, he, he too sees two curves. His fallen curve is the curve of human spirit. Thymos, whose loss gives us Nietzsche's last man and C.S. Lewis's men without chests, right? You could say a lot of things about people in the hood, but they have thymos, right? They have a society and a culture that, you know, you wouldn't describe them as the Nietzschean last man or a man without a chest. That's what, I'd, that's what I'd describe your average diversity bureaucrat as a university as, right? The last man is the human being, specifically the human elite at the end of a civilization. Um, the role of thymos is to maintain order. Pride in maintaining order is a crucial element of a functioning elite. When the elite loses this pride or even develops its opposite, Luciferian pride at destroying order, trouble is on the horizon. Um, you know, I just, I, I love, I love all the, you guys know I'm Christian. I, I love all the return to, to Christianity stuff lately, right? Like, you know, like, there's just some things that were so much better understood, I feel, by societies in the past, by societies who actually went outside and didn't interact with the world, mediated through a cell phone, that is created and curated by, you know, a small group of, of, of companies, right? You know, again, uh, it brings us back to, to Lil Mabu's, uh, is this the hood? Are these guys gangsters? Nobody knows, man. I don't know, people probably know. I've never heard of 5 year Farm before. Um, but no, this video is actually fire, check it out. Uh, 
Indeed, if present trends continue, voluntary human extinction seems likely to become a live political issue within our children's lifetimes. You laugh. Um, so let's, uh, Curtis comes to one of my, one of my sacred cows here. One of the things that I believe, one of the things that I repeat, and I've been rethinking it. Um, I, I went for a walk today. I had two people recognize me. Uh, one guy like thanked me, thanked me for, for what I was doing. Um, that guy had actually like met through a friend, so it wasn't weird. When like random strangers, by the way, if, if any of you watching this are like random strangers, like don't come up to me, man. Like, like don't, don't come up to me, man. Uh, you know, okay, look, if you're like cool and you can be cool about it, then it's fine. But like, when, like socially awkward people come up to me, man. Like what's, it's just like, it's like I feel awkward, right? Now the guy, the guy today, the guy today, I, I met through a friend and he was cool. And actually I, I was a very, very positive interaction. Um, and like this always makes me think of could accelerationism be a mass movement uh there was another this um when we so uh he curtis talks about the thymos crisis right the crisis of kind of and maybe everyone feels it right it's the crisis of kind of like why are we doing this all? Like, I feel it someday too, right? I think we all kind of do. Like, why, why keep this going? Who are we keeping it going for, right? Whereas, like, you just don't, you don't have this. And, uh, you know, when you're, when, you're, when you're too busy figuring out if we got to, you know, uh, uh, shoot up that guy's house tonight, you're not so worried about existential bullshit, right? Uh... You know, where are we doing the drive-by tonight, boys? Like, you're not so worried about existential bullshit. Um, so, uh, here, William James, uh, who thought that the uh, 1910s was, was decadent degeneracy. Eh, maybe it was, right? And maybe World War III is coming. Um, if now, and this is my idea, there were instead of a military conscription, uh, a conscription of the whole youthful population to form for a certain number of years a part of the army enlisted against nature. The injustice would tend to be evened out, uh, and numerous other goods to the commonwealth would follow. The military ideas of hardlihood and discipline would be wrought into the growing fiber of the people. No one would remain blind as the luxurious classes now are blind to man's real relations to the globe he lives on and to the permanently sour and hard foundations of his higher life to coal mines and iron mines, to freight trains, to fishing fleets in December, to dishwashing, clothes washing, and window washing, to road building and tunnel making, to foundries and stoke holes, and to the frames of skyscrapers, would our gilded youths be drafted off according to their choice to get the childishness knocked out of them and to come back into society with healthier sympathies and soberer ideas. They would have paid their blood tax done their own part in the immemorial human warfare against nature. They would tread the earth more proudly. The women would value them more highly. They would be better, fa better fathers and teachers of the following generation. I totally believe in this. I think this is actually awesome, right? Um, apparently uh, Mao had the same idea. Uh, he had some, he had some, uh, yeah, the sent down youth. Uh, but this is, this is based as hell, man. Like, I, like this is, so one of the problems that I run into when I think about this YouTube channel, when I think about the George Hotz quote unquote brand, everyone has a brand even if you acknowledge it or not, how toxic, biopsychiatry is real, look. Um, the, I have a lot of people who would uh, take direction a lot of y'all ask me for direction in your life. A lot of you say, what should I do, George? I'm studying this, blah, 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 blah. Right? Um, no, but really, really. So, so, so you have the ability to lead a, uh, to lead a movement, right? Um, and one of the problems that I've always run into is I do not know how to make the people genuinely useful to my movement. I do not know how to make most of you watching this video right now useful to my movement. And this is a problem. 
Curtis talks about it. While pushing forward the frontiers of human power over nature is indeed exhilarating, this experience is by nature itself limited to a few. And this is always, this is what I've experienced. This is my greatest um, joy in life, right? The conquest of nature, the overcoming, right? Um, you know, and you can look at that with stuff like the iPhone, uh, but that's, you know, that's, that's baby stuff, right? It's a good thing to train on, but again, the iPhone fundamentally is made by, uh, made by humans, right? But when you look at like the self-driving car problem or asking questions about what uh, deep learning, what machine learning, what machine intelligence really are, um, and then building machines that can do those things, right? These are, these are, these are pushing the frontiers of human power over nature. Um, and this is what Andreessen talks about. Andreessen will restore Thymos in two ways, by the direct energy of participating in research and development, and by the indirect energy of supporting technology as a cause, like global warming or the Palestinians. Um, yeah. And as a democratic cause, a movement of the crowd, technological accelerationism is a terrible product. The problem is, is that it is a good cause, a pro-social orderly cause. It has no victims or scapegoats. It does not inherently harm or damage anyone. In short, it's like asteroid defense, not like climate change. You will never ever see protesters gluing themselves to the road to get governments to spend more on asteroid defense. That is because the defending of the planet from asteroids is not a pretext for causing any kind of harm or damage. And I just absolutely love this. I love this take on all of these like, like Black Lives Matter, okay, that's great. What are you gonna do? Well, we're gonna go lie down in the middle of a highway. <laughs> okay, I get it. I, I wanna lie down in the middle of a highway too. Black Lives Matter, let's go, right? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Look, I, I played with this for a bit. Um, I actually went so far as to buy, uh, I own land. Uh, here. Um, this, is, this, is, this is one of my websites. I think I promoted a lot like two years ago. Uh, I've pretty much uh, given up on the idea uh, for several reasons. It's really hard to do anything. Like it's really hard to do anything on land and raw nature like that. And I'm not willing to devote, I'm not willing to devote like my time to it any more than a hobby. I'd put in a few hours a week, but a few hours a week would not make this succeed, right? Um, I, I do think that I'm, I'm better off. What do I actually spend my time on? I mean, now I've been spending like all my time just working on Tiny Fed, right? Um, you know, but I'd love to see someone do this. Right? The sent down youth. But you see, they have to be sent down. They have to be the elites. The problem is it can't be opt in. Uh, so yeah, you have a lot of energy, right? A lot of you ask me, what should I do? And the truth is like, I'm trying my best with Tiny Grad and the bounties, but again, this experience is by nature itself limited to a few, unless that magic elixir that turns us all into Einsteins is invented. And even that, I argue, uh, unless everyone is the equal level of Einstein, uh, it wouldn't really work uh, because, you know, yes, we get rapid progress, right? But yeah. Uh, I wasn't really trying for Galt's Gulch. And you know what? To be fair, this is a very long-term project of mine. I'm not getting rid of the land. I own 123 acres. Uh, absolutely beautiful. 30 minute drive from San Diego. Um, but what I realized I need is robotic labor. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to succeed at this project until we have robots that can, that can, uh, that can do shit. Uh, so, you know, we make, we make bodies. Uh, and someday I will put them to use on my land. Some days, bodies, you're going to work. And you're going to love it, right? That's right, that's right. Um, you can follow Billy AGI on Twitter. Uh, Billy is a comma body. It's a Twitter account. Um, yeah, you just look at like the money you could make off of this. Um, you can like board horses. And again, this is like good money to like pay like a few people's salaries, maybe. Um, you can grow grapes, but really what you want to do is 
It doesn't matter about the grapes you grow. It matters about the uh, weddings you host at your winery, right? So that's the kind of person who I really want to do this. And if anyone ever does reach out, right, and you're like, you know, I, I get I get emails from people who want to be my live-in property developer, and I'm like, like, bro, like, have you ever lived off grid? The answer to that is always no. And like, have you ever like spent a week in the woods? And the answer to that is no. And I'm like, oh God. Like even I've spent a week in the woods, right? <laughs> you know? Um, how you, seriously, how many of you, how many of you over here, well, engage chat. How many of you have spent a week in the woods? How many of you have spent a genuine, I guess the longest I've done was five days. That's good. Five days backpacking. All right, I'm not talking you drove your tent to some campground. Like, you know, you can... Five days, four nights is the longest I've done. Uh, four days, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of the limit, right? Like, like it, it, became, it becomes hard to carry all your food. Like, you can do it, but then you're really in some... Uh, in some... Most of, most, most of my backpacking trips are three days, two nights. Um, you know... <laughs> if you want to bring stuff that's going to ensure you like a, a decent standard of living, then then you gotta then then uh, you do that. Uh, if you're willing to bring very, I don't know, like I love those I love those meals. Um, I don't know. I just remember like I don't know, maybe it was just the people I did it with too. But um, you have five days off Great Appalachian Trail. All right, cool, good. See, see that's real. Like I appreciate that. Um, oh, you did. Yeah, yeah, bike packing. Um, the cool thing about bikepacking is it becomes really like, it's really quick to get to places. Uh, I don't know, like I, I did like Iceland did bikepacking, but you know, it was hotels half the nights and places for, places for food. Um. The woods are scary at night, bro. I feel that. I feel that. Uh. I'm not scared of wolves or really bears. I don't know. No, I mean, what scares me in the woods? Humans and mountain lions and rattlesnakes. Not even mountain lions. They're just like humans and like stepping on a rattlesnake. Um, I've been on bear encounters. I don't know. I mean, I guess I've never slept anywhere with brown bears. I'm scared of brown bears. But uh, California black bears are scary. Um, what's the strongest animal I can take down? Uh, I haven't really hunted. I'd like to do that sometime. I'd like to do that sometime. Um, if, 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 if one of my subscribers is like cool and not weird, like, uh, they want to, they want to go hunting. I'd, I'd be down. Uh, I always wanted to go hunting. Um, I did one, I did one backpacking trip once where we didn't bring any food and, uh, we brought a, uh, a book on edible wildlife. Um, <laughs> We found lots of edible wildlife, but you're eating like miner's lettuce and nasturtium and you're like, shit, this don't have any calories in it. So yeah, we lasted one night and the next day, um, I did fast for two days this year. Maybe I talked about it. Uh, we, we had a, we had a company wait, right, I'm, I'm really, I'm really going off with the weeds here. Uh, my, my point is, um, uh, I like this. I, I like this. I like this as an idea. Uh, the sent down youth. I love it. Um, Kanye's building a new city in the Middle East. Is this real? Uh, How's the Wisconsin, how's the, how's the Wyoming city going? Uh, I love Kanye, by the way. You know, I love Kanye, right? Um, it's just invading Israel, bro. <laughs> bro. Uh, you see, but that's, you know, that's the thing. Like, like you can... Like Kanye's got beef with the Jews, the Jews got beef with Harvard, and Harvard's the real enemy here. So as long as Harvard loses, we all win. Um, I'm like three steps away from moving to a shack in Montana. Ah, uh, someday, man, someday, someday. Uh, no, nah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mail bombs to people. What would I do? What I 
right there. No, I don't know. Uh, uh, live for a cause, don't die for a cause, right? What's the problem? You know, you can sympathize with the, with the Unabomber, but he pretty much died for a cause. He didn't really live for a cause, right? Could live for the cause. Uh, I mean, he did produce a great, a great, a great uh, manifesto, and you should all read it. And, you know, everyone knows that we're mature adults here, and we can separate the uh, art from the artist, right? Because we don't believe in identity politics. Perfect. Uh, Kanye must be good. The media is too unhinged talking about him. <laughs> Like, there's some Kanye clips that, like, that he's just so funny, man. Um, I would like to see the rap be good again. Like, I, I do not feel that his new albums have been uh, have been good. Donda and Donda Two, there, there are no my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. There are no college dropout. Uh, but uh, it was the was the Wyoming place. <laughs> the doctor clip, the doctor clip, the doctor. I'm not going to say what kind of doc. I'm not going to say. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's just, there's, a bit, there's a bunch of Kanye clips like that where you're just like, <laughs> what the fuck she know about cameras? I, don't, I haven't seen that one. It's just <laughs> reminds me of a, a little Wayne deposition clip where uh, uh, Mr. 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 Uh, Dwayne uh, Carter, did you... Uh, did you uh, hire a photographer on or about April 14th? Nah. Nah, man. I didn't hire a photographer. Look, look, I'm, I'm a superstar. I got people to do that for me. Um, <laughs> celebrity depositions are, are comedy gold. Uh, I, got, I got people to do that for me. Kanye 2020. No, no. <laughs> Elon had a good take on Kanye's. When Kanye actually like published his like Wakanda plan for governance. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> I got it. This makes me want to watch Kanye clips, man. I do remember this badass bitch birthday party. She was crazy, stupid, thick. Uh, no, no, no. We're not watching. We're not watching Kanye clips. You can, you can do that in your own time. Um, the ineffectiveness of technological acceleration as a cure for the chesslessness of the modern man is hardly the biggest problem with the techno optimist solution. The problem is actually much worse. Technical acceleration is not just not the cure for the last man syndrome. No, technology is the obvious cause of the last man syndrome. Andreessen is curing cancer with tobacco. Look at James's list of dirty jobs, dishwashing, clothes washing, and window washing. Half of these jobs have vanished into the maw of the machine. And it is already clear that over the next few decades, the present assault of AI on white collar bullshit jobs will soon be matched by a robotic assault on manual labor precisely the tool that is most useful for turning lazy, willful boys into mature and effective adults. William James could never have dreamed of a world in which most humans are useless. Um, this is one of the best videos on this topic, and it's crazy how old it is. Uh, I remember when this came out nine years ago. Uh, if you haven't seen this video, I will link it in chat. Uh, go watch this video. Uh, this video is great. Um, Plumber robots are, uh, yeah, I mean, yes. Yes, it's true that we'll get rid of the, we'll get rid of the white collar jobs first, but we will eventually get rid of the manual labor jobs. Um, Base God, CGP Grey, truth, truth, truth. Oh, CGP Grey also has a great video on how uh, dictatorships, democracies, and oligarchies work. Uh, so, so check that out. Um, uh, yeah. <coughs> um, to anyone trained in utilitarian economics, the idea that any kind of productivity increase could be harmful is deeply counterintuitive. In fact, there is a precedent for the negative impact of technological advances on societies, the negative impact of resource discoveries, the resource curse is well known. I actually don't agree with Curtis here. Um, I think that this is actually very different because the resource curse exists 
because other nations then buy whatever that resource is. The resource curse cannot affect the entire world, right? It's not like the entire world can discover money trees and we can all become lazy. Um, so I, I don't think that it's the same thing. I think that technological advance has the capacity to do this to the entire world, whereas <coughs> any sort of traditional resource, unless it is total, right? And that is the difference between something like oil. Oil may be useful for many, many things. But it is not like AGI, it is not total. Uh, but this, what ends up happening, seems uh, similar. They transition from the economic means of subsistence, producing stuff that other people need, to the political means, taking stuff that other people have. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, UBI is not a solution. Uh, I don't know what I can say about this, but an article, I, I got an article coming out soon. Uh, you guys can read it. I, I talk about my, my, my thoughts on the solution to this problem. Um, it's, it's related to, if you haven't read Wireheading City on my blog, it's, it's in those lines. Um, this is incredibly ironic for Andreessen to present the acceleration of technology as the cure for 21st century words I do not know. Hmm. Listlessness or torpor are not caring or not being concerned with one's position or condition in the world. Yeah, definitely see that. Enemy, that sounds French. Breakdown of any moral values, standards, or guidance for individuals to follow. Yeah, yeah that sounds good, man. That sounds good. Uh, which is actually the result of technological acceleration. Oh, whoa, I've never read this. <laughs> Humanity is a population of spiritless, decadent socialites living underground inside the belly of a giant single machine. Then the machine breaks and the people just die. <laughs> Based, man. Based. Wait, I want to read this. Is it long? All right, well, I'll read that off stream. Uh... Yeah, uh, one can easily see uh, Trotsky at, at, at Burning Man. He talks about how the, uh, the Soviets were uh, accelerationists. So y'all thought that this was going to be a shill stream for the wonders of accelerationism. Uh, but it's not. It's not. Uh, I like the idea of accelerationism right now, but I do not think it is a good long-term ideology. And I don't think that we have a good long-term ideology. Um, now, like, I mean, and this is kind of unfortunate for me, uh, because I do personally get lots of joy out of this, pushing forward the frontiers of human power over nature. But this experience is by nature itself limited to just a few. And I can't share that with all of you. And here on this stream, I want to share with you guys. And I don't think I can share that. I, I don't even know, and this is probably just my inabilities as a manager, but most people, even if I had like complete, if they, if they, all the willpower they could muster, they devoted it to me. I'm not sure what I could do with that, right? And I'm not some, I'm not some like David Koresh type who would, uh, who, who likes that. I actually don't like that. I, I, I find, I find that kind of like, it's awful. It's actually really like, I don't like, if you see me in the street and you don't know me, like, don't talk to me, man, unless you're cool and you can do it in like a cool, chill way. But most of y'all aren't, right? Oh, George Hodge, I'm such a fan. Oh my God. See, I, I think there are people in the world who like that. I'm just like, so like, like, what the fuck do you want me to say, man? You know, at least have the decency. When I'm eating or feeding my daughter to not come and speak to me. Uh, <laughs> right? um, so yeah, uh, this question, this stream leaves with more, more questions than answers. Um, but, you know, again, you guys say Curtis is, Curtis is, is saying the absolute most clear stuff. 
be between between you know Curtis and the more broad picture thing uh, Peter Thiel doing an incredibly good job describing the present which is kind of criticism um, uh, yeah <laughs> my tracksuits and Nikes right let's pick some rare ass Nikes let's, let's see. Heaven's Gate was in San Diego man let's do it uh no, look, look, like, like, it's not a cult because I'm not a cult leader, right? I've thought about being a cult leader, but there's very little that I can do. First off, there's very little I can do with like capital, like money capital. Um, there's even less, I'm not very good at deploying money capital, and I'm even less good at deploying human capital. I, there, there are people who are good at these things, and I, you know, I, this is, this, God, like, that's something I think about is like, what does what does separate me from Elon? Like, what what does what does he have that I don't? Um, and it seems to just be like, like a crazy sort of, I don't know. I'm, I'm reading. I'm working my way through the biography now. Um, like a crazy sort of. I don't even know if it's like a risk tolerance. Like he. he I don't know why I can't deploy capital. Um, I mean, in a way, okay. Look, I, I'm obviously. Uh, uh, I think Elon's doing a lot of a lot of good for the world. But we can look at someone who's a bit more neutral, like Sam Altman, right? Um, I, I, you know, I, my my opinion of Sam Altman has gone significantly up after the uh, after the OpenAI after the coup, uh, after the coup attempt. Uh, I realized that Sam Altman's not an effective altruist, and the people who I really don't like at OpenAI, like Helen Toner, uh, Sam Altman apparently also doesn't like. Uh, again, you know, enemy your enemy and all that, right? So my opinion of Sam Altman has gone up. Um, I also said on Twitter that I liked, uh, if we look at OpenAI's new blog post, um, so, uh, by the way, I'm not, you, you, maybe some of you watched my debate with Yudkowsky. I do not think I was in good form in that debate. Uh, I rewatched clips of that today. I was like, oh, that's such a bad argument. Why did I say that, man? Yeah, I'm not practiced in the art of debate. Uh, then I rewatched parts of my Lex and I was like, damn, I said some good shit in there, you know? That was that was, that was was good thinking. Um, so, you know, if, you, if you're gonna watch some, some George Hotz videos, watch the Lex, don't watch the Yukowski debate. But, you know, I, I'm not a, uh, I'm not an anti, I, I do believe that AI alignment is somewhat of a real thing. Um, it's unclear how distinct AI alignment is from just AI capability. Right? Capability and alignment may totally be the same thing. Uh, I mean, you can talk about like the capability and the alignment of a person. Um, if a person lacks capability, most often when I tell someone to do something, it is not an alignment issue, it's a capability issue. Uh, so, but it's interesting, you can read this. Like, this is a very, I, I like the tone here so much more. Uh, this is the verge, I, I shouldn't do this, I should. Here. Due to concerns about large language models being used to generate deceptive, biased, or abusive language at scale. Oh, oh, right. But who cares about this shit, right? Um, but if, you know, we're talking about how can humans steer and trust AI systems much smarter than them? This is actually a very interesting question. Uh, and they're talking about weak to strong generalization, interpretability, scalable oversight, honesty, chain of thought faithfulness, adversarial robustness, evals and test beds, right? If this is what you mean by alignment research, this shit's great. Uh, especially if you're doing this kind of research in public, right? Like adversarial robustness, right? Like you can make fun of a lot of like the adversarial research, but there are some deep questions here. Um, you know, if you're building evals and test beds and you're doing this publicly, this is great. 
Uh, so, you know, again, my opinion of OpenAI has gone up. Um, but coming back to my point about, you know, what, what separates, why am I not an Elon Musk or a, or a Sam Altman, right? Uh, I don't think these people are smarter than me. Uh, but they have an ability to deploy capital. And I, I sadly think it might be because they're willing to lie. Um, a lot of what I've heard about Sam Altman, and maybe right away is why I, I didn't get that he, you know, actually was pretty opposed to the effect of altruists, is he'll say yes to everybody, right? Even if he doesn't mean it. And Elon, in a way, did this to me, right? Like, if I proposed a contract with somebody, I would stick to it. Uh, I mean what I say. Now, I don't say a lot, right? Because I'm careful to mean what I say. Um, but they seem unbothered by this. They seem unbothered by sort of leading people on. Uh, and I've come to like this single thing is the greatest difference, right? Like with comma, I scream, you know, no partnerships, right? But imagine I did. Imagine I spun up a bullshit partnership division, right? That told every company we were going to work with them and then raise tons of money, right? Like, I think I think I talk about this. I have a blog post where I go into this a bit. Um, but like, this is just sad. If, uh, yeah, I call it a disgusting playbook, right? Right? Um, you know, Elon every year would promise level five self-driving, right? It wasn't true. Um, you know, Sam Altman's cruise revenues right around the corner, right? This is exactly focused on, you know, maybe, yeah, Elon and, 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 and Sam. Um, as in what they have and I don't. And if that turns out to be the truth. Right now, to be fair, you can talk also about how much of that is my ego, right? How much of that is they actually have some real skill that I don't, right? And how much am I hating on this skill because I don't have this skill, right? You can say that it's an unwillingness, but is this sour grapes on my behalf? And the answer is like, maybe, I don't know. Like I think about that a lot and yeah. Um. Well, Cruz also lies, right? So lies do eventually catch up with you. It's interesting, right? It's interesting. So the lies did catch up with, uh, with Cruz. Uh, this was, I posted this blog post before the, uh, the Cruz accident. Um, you know, a story I heard about Elon, like after my sort of beef with him, uh, you know, this is one of the like, uh, apparently there was this guy who was working on the space internet and Elon took like five meetings with him, right? Like long meetings where they discussed all of this technical detail, basically on the premise that Elon was going to fund him. Um, Elon did not fund him. Elon cut him out and made Starlink. Now, how do we judge that behavior, right? Like I judge that behavior as I can go buy a Starlink, right? And this kid was probably gonna do nothing. Maybe, maybe not. But again, if Elon steals the idea and builds Starlink or steals the idea, right? Like it's kind of ridiculous, right? I don't believe that stealing the idea was really the problem. There's no such thing as stealing an idea. Intellectual property is stupid. But uh, no, that, that he led this person on and basically got this person to, uh, you know, uh, you know, tell, tell, tell them everything was working on in, in, in multiple meetings. And then, like, you know, people on LinkedIn are like, George, you're asking for work for free with the bounties. And I'm like, I'm so disgusted by this. It's like, first off, it's not even free. But, like, fundamentally, what I'm asking you to do is, is contribute to it, like an open source project. You see what it is, right? And if you don't see what it is, that's on you, right? But then you could say the same thing about business, right? If I don't see what it is, that's on me, right? Um, all right. But yeah, um, utilitarian ethics are absolutely disgusting. The problem with utilitarianism is you are willing to kill three people to save 10, right? And then eventually you just lose the to save 10 part and you just kill three people. Well, like hypothetically, they might've killed people in the future, right? The, the, the pipeline from utilitarian to murderer is very straightforward, right? This is the problem with utilitarian. Um, don't let Sam Walton scan your eyeballs. <laughs> you know, to be fair, like, 
What these people also are very capable of doing is building thymic energy. Right? Elon and Sam, they, they build thymic energy, right? And this is a universally good skill, right? So as much as I can hate on the lying and the business scumminess, they're clearly both way better at this than I am, right? Um, I've been building a company now for seven years at Kama, and Kama's like 25 people. It's a pretty good company. It works, makes money. Uh, you know, making open source software. It's good. But, you know, it's not... OpenAI started around the same time. Cruise started around the same time. Right? Not Cruise. Cruise is stupid. But, like, uh, you know, OpenAI you know, started around the same time. Uh, maybe you just need to partner with someone. Okay, so let's not use that word, right? So this is another, maybe this is a character flaw of mine. Uh, let's, uh, the word partner is, is actually pretty disgusting to me because let's just be clear about the hierarchical relationship here, right? Either they work for me or I work for them, right? There's two ways to quote unquote partner with somebody, right? Um, you know, they work for me or I work for them. Uh, could I, like, the problem is also a lot of these people are just, like, liars without any sort of competence to back it up, right? You talk about that Starling story, right? And, like, let's think of the flip side of this, right? Let's think of an Elizabeth Holmes, right? Elizabeth Holmes and Theranos probably shut down numerous uh, microfluidic blood testing startups, right? just by kind of out-competing them in a fake bullshit market where they didn't get any funding, right? And that is unforgivable, right? That is the, that is the, right? So had Elon like taken funding away from somebody for Starlink and then not built Starlink himself? Well, that's, uh, or robbed someone of thymic energy uh, and then not built it himself, right? That, that would, my, my judgment would be very different in that case. But, uh, you know. He built it and you can buy it. And that kind of, that pretty much absolves you of all, of all sins, right? Like fundamentally, if you deliver, and then maybe that's what it is. Maybe it is just a completely irrational belief in yourself. Um, you know, literally $120 a month, I can buy this. They're in Best Buy, right? Like how cool, man, how cool. Uh, Pretending to build Hyperloop to prevent rail projects? <laughs> I don't think the Hyperloop is the reason there's no rail projects in America, man. Um, and I, you know, again, I've, uh, I've driven, I've been driven in a Tesla through Elon's tunnel. So again, as far as his infrastructure projects go, uh, it's just, it's just not scams, right? Like you built an actual tunnel and I've been in it, right? I've never been in a cruise car. I don't even know if I can sign up for a cruise car, but I've been in Elon's tunnel during CES, right? Pretty cool. Um, didn't Biden push the speed train bill? Yeah, where's my fucking train, right? Like you can do whatever you want, but where's the train, right? Fundamentally, have I been on this train? Do you know anyone who's been on this train? No, there's no train, right? Uh, what I think of the tunnel. It's pretty cool. It's a, it's a pretty nice tunnel. I, I like it. on a song a bit this morning uh it's like a show tune style uh but it wasn't that good you know it's 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 uh 
it's Christmas, right? I'm doing a work today. I was like, today's today's a no work day. Um, I smoked and went for a walk, and I listened to Peter Thiel, and now I'm sharing it with you guys. Uh, you sold out. You used to shill your Instagram, yes, but only ironically, bro. Only ironically. By the way, I'm partnering with you, Sleep. They make a sleeve to hold your vape, man. And it holds a vape around your neck. You can click my affiliate link and you can get $8. And by the way, have I talked about the therapy session that I had with BetterHelp? Yes, BetterHelp really changed my perspective on everything. And if you use my code right here, link in the description, you too can start improving your well-being with BetterHelp. And I'll also mention, if you're thinking about building a website, have you considered Squarespace? Squarespace. I've never been to the website, but I, I, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Square, I built my website with Squarespace and it really changed my life. The therapy, no, sorry, the, the website building experience provide. Oh, I can't keep this straight, man. Hey, Tony, Tony, you gotta write better scripts for this shit. The advertisers aren't gonna sponsor us. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Mm. Starlink for homes, internet service. And by the way, while we're talking about internet service, have you considered surfing the internet with Surfshark? Surfshark VPN, you can pretend to be from any country, even some countries that don't have ads, or you can watch content, or you can participate, or you can go play Counter-Strike on, on a VPN to make your ping time higher. So then when you run your cheat, you're less detectable by the server, right? Um. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that kid, man. He's just an Amazon Fire Stick in a hotel. <laughs> I don't even know if that story is true, man. Uh, look, 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 look. And I'll say, like, you know, normally the people who are doing destructive shit, like the people who are like hacking and then like releasing, uh, releasing like, uh, you know, like private, like like the TJ Maxx hacker and stuff, right? Like that's just illegal shit. But you know, we're to the point now when you're 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 hacking Rockstar and stealing their GTA. Like, no, I mean, you know, kind of criminality is bad, but also, come on, man, this is funny as shit. Don't lock the kid up, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> indefinite hospital detention. How true is any of this, right? God, you know. Uh, oh, that, it's just like it's sad to think about. They they pumped him full of some primitive pharmaceuticals, right? You know that futures ended voyage. They pumped me full of primitive pharmaceuticals. Um, he tried to ransom them. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know, man. We can't support criminality. We can't support criminality, right? Criminality's bad, but we have to be able to separate the art from the artist. <laughs> um. <laughs> he used an Amazon. Yo, Tony Stark built this in his cave with scraps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no ransomware is real. No, no, like the ransomwareing of like hospitals and stuff. No, those those people are just straight up criminals, man. Um, but if you believe fundamentally that information should be free, you gotta just you gotta be an idealist, man. You gotta do it and be an idealist. You, you can't do it and 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 be a uh, you know be a be a be a like a like a criminal. Right? It's, it just taints the whole thing. But if you just hack people and say information should be free, man, you know, I don't know. I don't know. That's a, it's an easy cause. It's an easy terrorist cause for me to sympathize with. Um, don't worry. I heard recently that the NSA and the CIA are less well run than the DMV. So, you know, yeah. I mean, that's a kind of a comforting thought, to be honest. If it's true, I don't know if it's true, but it's kind of a, a comforting uh, thought. Minnick's dead? I, I vaguely remember that. I met him once. Cool guy. Sad. Um, do I support code as law ethos in crypto? <sighs> um. <laughs> Yeah. 
it's hard, right? I, I can see both sides of that argument. I can see both sides of that argument. Like, I don't know, uh, do we have a civilization or not? Like, you got you got to be against stealing, man. Like, you gotta you gotta be against stealing. But like, I don't know. Like, here's what I support. Here's what I would support on the code is law question. Um. One way to make all systems much more secure is to make hacking legal, right? Imagine a world where hacking was legal. Uh, it'd be an interesting world because I, I gave this talk once and I, I couldn't stand like, like by the end of my quote unquote security career. Um, this was the new line that I was giving people. I'm like, you guys, if you actually cared about security, we need to lobby to make hacking legal, right? Because then things will actually become secure. As soon as hacking is legal, like the, 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 cost to find the browser exploit will no longer be 100k right it'll be 100 million because when hacking is legal we could have you know large well-funded corporations trying to exploit browsers right and then we'd actually get secure code um so uh yeah i think here's what i'm gonna say about code is law all right all right i got this i got this i got this i love this i love this analogy oh man we have two zones, right? We have like the P versus E zone and the P versus P zone, right? We have two zones of crypto. We have the zone of crypto where normal laws are enforced and we have the zone of crypto where code is law, right? Oh, come on. Come on, that's based in shit. We need that. I like that, right? And if you enter the PVP zone, you are a consenting participant in the code is law game, right? I love it. Like, you know, you, you got in on, on, on pancake swap and someone robbed all the pancakes from the master chef. Like, bro, sorry. Sorry, you're in the PVP zone, right? So that we have the PVP zone of crypto where code is law and the PVE zone, like USDC, right? Like you're stealing USDC, man. You're knocking over Mt. Gox and stealing Bitcoin. I mean, that might've been illegal beyond a code is law thing. But like, uh, you know, like 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 the DAO. You know, remember the original DAO hack in Ethereum? Would have the DAO hack been in the PVP zone? In which case, the DAO hacker could have been like, pwned you noobs, right? Like that's the world we want to live in. We want to live in a world where we have clarity. We have clarity about those laws, right? Because like in a, I mean, you still might want to not go around bragging about how you pwned the noobs, right? Because someone might, you know, shoot you. But uh, <laughs> PVP and PVE. I code is law, right? Unless I lose money, right? That's what it is in crypto right now. A lot of idealists talking about how code is law. No, government, you have to come give me my pancakes back. Someone swapped my pancakes. <laughs> hey, you have these crypto companies. It's actually kind of funny, right? They, they might talk on Twitter about how code is law and then they get hacked. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, we got to have we got to have consent, right? It's all about consent. I love consent, you know? Um, it's wild how fast they switch once they're hacked. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know if Pancake Swap got hacked. I'm not trying to slander Pancake Swap here. I just think it's a funny name, right? I love the Binance Smart Chain. Um, I didn't make money on the Binance Smart Chain. I did not. I wanted to make $2 million on Binance Smart Chain, but I didn't, I didn't make any money on Binance Smart Chain. Uh, <laughs> uh, Caroline, is she, uh, is she free? Is she free? What's she up to? Uh, cheap ETH, though. All right, guys, I scammed you all. I scammed you all, guys. Cheap ETH, man, I pre-mined it pre-mined it and I, I hid the pre-mine right there in the code, man. Oh man, that cheat. you can go join DevEath, man. Is DevEath still up? I'm, I'm waiting for the tiny grad. Oh. I'm waiting for the this is this is the cheap ETH, the cheap ETH hater discord, right? I just love to see the thymos, you know? Um for, for reference, I lost $5,000 on cheap ETH, right? So whenever all the haters on hackers, George was involved in this shady crypto project. Oh my God. Like this is why no one legit wants to get involved and all you get are scammers, right? Uh, <laughs> like, you know, you just, you just. Um, 
Yeah, no, the Debbie, the Debbie guy was a big name hater in the Cheap Eat Discord. But, you know, he put up a website. He made his own chain, right? We got, we made the Cheap Eat Bridge from Cheap Eat today. Look, it's all about having a good time. And a lot of people in crypto forgot that when they got rich, right? And that's why crypto is, is sad. Because, like, you know, people get rich and they all forget about having a good time, right? You get hacked, you all forget about your ideals, about code being law real fast, right? All right. Um... Is crypto still EACC, bros? I'm not EACC, okay? Like, like this is like, like it's not. A, this is, it's, uh, uh, like, it, uh, Twitter movements are, are, are. I don't have that in my bio, right? Like, we can talk about effective accelerationism as an idea, right? It's like the free zone of Scientology, right? Auditing is pretty good. I love whipping out my e meter to get people to calm down, right? But like, like I'm not gonna pay the Church of Scientology, right? Like, read Dianetics and buy an e meter. Um, tiny grad coin. Oh. Oh, all right. Good stream. I think that was today's stream. I think we covered a lot of good topics. Uh, I'm sorry I don't have any answers for you guys. Um, but we talked about accelerationism. And then techno pessimism, and that's what news is. Okay, so we did news tonight, and that's why I was just chatting. Uh, Merry Christmas, everybody! Uh, happy holidays, happy Hanukkah. If you celebrate Kwanzaa, do you, does anyone actually celebrate Kwanzaa? If you celebrate Kwanzaa, you have a great Kwanzaa. You have the best Kwanzaa you could have, man. We love everybody on this stream. Um, if, if, if you celebrate Festivus, I, I think that's a that's a that's a holiday. Thing, man, if you celebrate the flying spaghetti monster, fuck you. I hate atheists, man. That's the one religion I can't tolerate. You guys are so dogmatic, spreading your shitty atheists. There's no God beliefs, man. You all read Dawkins and you got smug. Like, go read the Bible. Oh, George, I hate that he says Christian shit. Oh my God, I'm kidding, man. You know what? It's like the, it's like the what's the narcissism of small differences? No, we're spreading holiday love, everybody. Happy holidays to all faiths and denominations. But really, Merry Christmas, because the uh, meek shall inherit the earth. Jesus Christ. All right. Bye, everybody.